Good morning, Highway Online. I'm so glad you've decided to spend some of your morning with us here today in our online service. I want to welcome you today if you're a first-time guest. If that's you this morning, I'd like you to help us out because we want to know who you are and we want to know that you're with us and we want to send you a little more formal welcome in the mail this week. So if you could take out your phone and text the word welcome to 416 416- 267-1189 or if you logged in this morning and you're in the chat there's a button right there that you can hit right now to connect with us either way follow the prompts that way we get the information we need to send that more formal welcome and thanks for deciding to spend some of your morning with us here today as i mentioned just previous the chat is open and i encourage every one of you to get involved in the chat it's very simple to do you just log in if you've never logged in before as you'll see on the screen right now there's three lines at the top left hand corner if you just click on those it'll take you to another screen which will ask you to log in or sign up either way just log in or sign up and once you hit sign up it'll ask you for an email address and a password for you to set there's no charge for this but join the chat. It's your way of knowing that you're not sitting somewhere isolated right now, that you're with other people. You can make comments on the sermon, please make them nice, or you can um, put little hearts up and hands waving and all that, or you can ask for prayer right there in the chat, or you can even chat with other people that you see online uh, privately as the service is going on. Any way you look at it, The chat is important, so we encourage you to be part of it. I want to share a few things that are coming up here at Highway very quickly with you this morning. First of all, youth is tomorrow night at 7 p.m. here in the Highway building. That's for ages or grades 9 through 12. So youth tomorrow night here in the building. Zoom Kids in Junior Highs is happening again this Friday at 7 p.m. SK to grade 5 for for Zoom Kids and grades six through eight for junior highs. Make sure your child's registered if they haven't been here yet this year so that they can sign in properly and we can know that they're here with us. As well, mark your calendars. There's a prayer gathering coming up next Sunday night at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. here in the building. That's for everyone. Bring your children, bring your spouse, bring yourself. Come pray as we pray into specific needs in our church and for some very very some things we just feel we need to pray about that's the best way to put that as well alpha is back tomorrow night if you missed the first alpha it's not too late to sign up Uh, we didn't have one last week due to the thanksgiving weekend so you've only missed one session so if you still want to join alpha just go to our website click the alpha button register and I will get you last week's material so you can catch up and then plan to be here tomorrow night, be online tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. This week, our small groups are beginning. Along with the Being Challenge, the small groups are taking place. So we encourage you, be part of a small group. Small groups are important to your growth and your journey with Jesus. You've probably seen this as soon as I started talking about small groups. There's a QR code on your screen. If you wanna join a small group, the easiest way to do it is to just click on that QR code and it will take you to the registration on our website for small groups. If you can't use the QR code because your phone doesn't do that, go to our website and look for the small groups and find a small group to join as we begin the Being Challenge this week. We begin it actually today in the service. I want to thank everybody for your ongoing support of the mission and ministry here at Highway. I want to remind you there's four ways to give. You can use e-transfer, you can use the Tithely app, you can click, you can go to our website and click the give button or right now if you're in the chat you can click the give button there which will take you to our website for giving or you can mail us a check. Please don't mail cash but once again I want to thank you for your ongoing support and your faithfulness to the ministry here at Highway. For this morning's digital teaching notes, just open the YouVersion app, find Highway, and you can follow along with Pastor Dan's sermon this morning. 
for everything I've talked about and more, check out our website, highwaygospel.ca. Look for our weekly email and to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. God bless you. Remember, Highway is a place to belong. Now, before we go to worship and the word, let's pray together. Father God, we thank you this morning that you are here with us, that you love us, that you are present with us no matter where we are right now. So Lord, just be with us, touch us, heal us, open our hearts to hear your word this morning and help us to understand your word this morning. Touch bodies who are in need today, touch minds who are in need, give forgiveness that is needed this morning. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Before I forget, I didn't mention this. If you're joining in the Being Challenge, we do have books still available. If you need one, because you're online, we ask you to call the church at 416-267-1189 and just leave us a message that you need a book. Or if you can make it into the office, we're here on Thursdays and you can come pick up your book then. Either way, make sure you're taking part in the Being Challenge and that you have your book. God bless you. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again, whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the Time has come, still my 
Good morning. I'm so glad that you were with us. Today we start a brand new series called The Being Challenge. This is a series that we're going to follow for 40 days. It's going to help us grow to be more like Jesus. Before I get into our topic, I want to start with a story. It's a story about a well-known swimmer named Michael Phelps. And this story takes place in the 2000 Summer Olympics that were held in Beijing. Now, you probably recognize his name if you followed any of the Olympics. He, he became one of the most, if not the most, decorated uh, Summer Olympian of all time. In 2008, he won eight gold medals in the swimming pool. That's just an astounding uh, feat. Now, what we don't know about Michael Phelps is that Early in his career, he would get extremely nervous when it came time for the swimming competitions. And so what happened is his coach instilled into him a number of habits that he would go through at every swimming competition, regardless of what the competition was or where it was. He instilled these habits. So these are, these are the habits that he would do. He would eat the exact same breakfast at the, uh, without any changes before every meet. He would also do the same warm-up exercises and stretching exercises and do it all for the exact same amount of time. And then he'd take time to put on his, his, his suit, his racing suit for the pool, and it could take upwards of 20 minutes or even more to slowly get that suit on in place. And once he had done all those things, then he would put his headphones on, he would listen to music, he'd listen to the exact same um, music, and he had a whole track of music, and he'd, he'd listen to that, he also used that when he was training, so everything was very consistent. And final thing he would do is he'd, he'd sit quietly, uh, close his eyes with his music playing, and he would visualize the race that was coming next. He would uh, imagine what it would be like to do it every 
turn he had to make, every stroke he had to make. He visualized exactly what it would take for him to do that. And then when race time came and he'd come, he'd stand on the blocks, and some of you are familiar with this, he would stand on the blocks just before a race at the and he would do stretches and he would wave his arms and stretches and do all kinds of funny things. We got used to seeing that. But at the 2008, 20,000, at the 2008 um, Olympics in Beijing, it was the 200 meter butterfly. This would probably go down as maybe one of his greatest victories because um, it's in this race where all of his habits would come and pay off. And uh, so when the race started, he jumped into the pool and his, his goggles must have moved or jostled and, and he would tell us that it began to leak water. Now, I don't know how much you know about swimming. I only know what I watch at the Olympics, to be honest. But you know that those races are quick. A, a swimmer can't stop to readjust. Uh, stopping to readjust your goggles will make you lose that race easily. And so he decided he's just going to push through. And he actually said in an article that when he did the final turn and got to the final 100 meters, I think it was the final turn, it was, it was he said the final 100 meters of his race, he couldn't see anything because his goggles had been full of water. He couldn't even see the line at the bottom of the pool that marked his lane. He just knew what he needed to do. And he has said, I think I needed about 20 or 20 21 strokes to get to the end and so he started to count down his strokes as he went and he pushed through and in his final stroke he thought I need a big push and he did and he touched the wall when he touched the wall he immediately turned and ripped his glasses off he looked he looked for the scoreboard the leaderboard and there it was his name first place with the letters R uh, W R next to it world record. Not only did he win a race that he couldn't see in, but he set a world record. You see, Michael Phelps' habits had prepared him for the big race, and he won the race because of his habits. See, that is the power of habits. As we do things over and over, they become easier and easier for us to do until one day we do them without even thinking about them and they become part of our nature. See, that's the goal of this series. In this series, I'll, we will be introduced to five habits, and, and the author's gonna call them keystone habits that we find in the life of Jesus. My hope is that you will learn to take these five habits of Jesus and apply them into your life to make you more and more like Jesus, to make you a stronger, disciple of Jesus. Let's turn our attention to the words of Jesus, if you would. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 24, we read these well-known words, I think, of Jesus. He says, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. The... Jesus is speaking directly to, to any of his followers, to any of the crowd, and he's saying this, we need to be hearers and doers of Jesus' words. See, those who follow what Jesus says, Jesus says they are wise, but likewise, those who ignore what Jesus says, they are foolish. So my question to you today is, do you want to be wise? See, if we're going to truly be Christians, then the best thing we could do is follow Christ Jesus. And so the first thing we need to understand as we look at habits is that Jesus is our example. Jesus is the only person who had a perfect relationship with God the Father. 
Jesus is the only person whose life that we could look at to say, there's the example of what I want to follow. So if you want to grow in your relationship with God, then Jesus is the one that you need to emulate. See, Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29, Jesus said this, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. One of the first things that Jesus tells us here is, learn from me. We need to learn from Jesus. Jesus is inviting us into a process where we could follow him and, and, and learn from him, and he can be our example as we learn more about Jesus, we will find a deeper peace. Because he says, not only will you learn from me, but you will find rest. You'll find rest for your souls. You'll find rest. And this rest comes as you surrender your life to Jesus. As you follow him, your soul finds that even in the ups and downs of life, even, even in the challenges, if, if you are anchored to Jesus, then your soul finds rest. There could be turmoil on the outside. There could be unrest. There could be difficult times, ups and downs of life, like I said. But in the midst of that, Jesus becomes the calming center. He becomes the anchor. He becomes that rock, that firm foundation that he spoke about. See, Jesus is our example. And we need to learn what Jesus has been teaching us. Jesus taught us about God the Father. Jesus showed us God in his miracles, in, in uh the healings and in all the mighty things he did. Jesus left us an example so that we can have a relationship with God just like he did. You see, you need to learn from Jesus. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, then Jesus is the only true example that you have. This leads us to asking ourselves, how can good habits help you become more like Jesus? A study, you'll, you, if you look in your book, you'll, you'll see a reference to this study, but a study done by Duke University found that 40% of our actions each day are actually not decisions, but our habits. That means 40% of your day is, is basically an autopilot. Now, this isn't a bad thing, actually. I think this is a good thing. Can you imagine if every day you had to make routine decisions and, and go through all the clockwork? I mean, we know what, what some of our daily habits are. You, you get out of bed, you go to the washroom, you wash your face, you, you wash up, you brush your teeth, hopefully. Th these, are, these aren't decisions. They're just part of our habits. And it's good because we don't have to waste our time working through every decision. Oh, like, what toothpaste will I use today? We just choose what's at hand and away you go. They're, they're just habits. But what this teaches us is we really need to pay attention to some of the habits in our life. We've been doing some things on, on autopilot for so long that we don't give it much consideration. So... Let's define a habit here. A habit is a regular tendency or practice, especially one that is hard to give up. Oh, especially one that is hard to give up. I mean, let's, let's, we all know it. There are good habits and there are bad habits, aren't they? And we usually struggle with stopping bad habits so we can start good habits, don't we? I mean, it can be hard, yes, Absolutely, it can be hard to form good habits, but it's absolutely doable. I mean, we all know some of these things. We all know we should eat more healthy vegetables than chocolates and sweets. I mean, that's my thing, right? Uh, I love the sweets. I'll eat the vegetables, but I also want the sweets, right? Um, we all know it's probably a good idea to not smoke and instead exercise more. We know that. It's, it's just doing it that matters. Charles Duhigg, in his book, The Power of Habit, talks about not just habits, but what he calls 
keystone habits, the habits that are foundational. He defines a keystone habit this way. A habit that people introduce into their lives that unintentionally carries over into other aspects of their lives. See, these habits, these keystone habits, he says, are more difficult to form, but they provide much greater benefits. I've kind of already alluded to a few of them. Uh, these keystone habits can spark chain reactions to automatically becoming good habits in our lives. And, and here's some keystone habits um, that they say are good for everybody in life. Some you'll know, and some you've probably never considered. But let's start with the easy one, exercise. Everybody knows we should exercise, and we should exercise properly at least three times a week for it to be beneficial. And uh, as a chain reaction, studies have proven people who exercise regularly tend to eat healthier. It's, it's a chain reaction. That's what he means. Here's one, planning your day. You're more likely to accomplish more in your day if you plan your day. So either plan your day first thing in the morning. Some even suggest you plan it the day before so you know what's happening the next day and you'll become uh, more accomplished that way. Sleep. We all know we need to sleep, but good sleep, quality good sleep is what we need every day. Following a morning routine. It allows you to start your day productive and it carries on. These are just some keystone habits. I'm just giving them to you as examples so you understand what time. Here's one you maybe didn't think about, but having family dinners. It's actually a small step that, that goes great, especially when you've got younger children and you gather children together uh, around your table and you begin to, to just have family time. It actually helps build family and relationships. And here's one you probably never thought of, but a keystone habit is making your bed every morning. Now, I'm probably the, the school of thought that says it doesn't matter personally. I mean, normally you get out of bed, you go on with your day, and you don't usually come back to bed till the end of the day. So to me, it doesn't matter if it's made, but I married to a person who loves to make the bed every day. And so it's become part of our habit over 30 plus years that every day the bed gets made. But they say that those who make their bed every day lead to increased productivity in their day. See, if our goal is to be more like Jesus, then we need to learn the habits Jesus had and we need to follow his example. Paul says the same thing in a different way to Timothy, and he writes it in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. Paul says, Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness is value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. See, we know that it's important to have a good physical, mental, and emotional ha habits in our lives. But Paul says, as good as all those are, it's more important to have good spiritual habits in our lives. And so that's what we're going to talk about in the coming weeks, that we need to follow the keystone habits of Jesus. Over the next six weeks, we're going to discover and dig into five keystone habits that Jesus exemplified in his life and that we need to learn in our life. So starting this week, starting Tuesday, in your being book, there will be day one. And from there, you'll have 40 days, one day, uh, one reading a day for 40 days. Um, and it will introduce you this week. We're going to be introduced to these five ha keystone habits. And then in the following weeks, we're going to take one habit per week and dig into it and understand it. So I'm not going to unpack them for you today, but I will introduce them to you extremely briefly today. And so the first habit we're going to learn is commit to community. So you were not designed to do life alone. You were designed to do life in community. And we see that way back at the beginning of the Bible in Genesis, and it carries all the way through, even in Jesus' ministry. He didn't do ministry alone. We, you were to... to you were created for community. We need to commit to community. And then the second one is we need to study Scripture. 
See, Jesus knew the scriptures. We don't think about that too much, but when Jesus taught the crowds, the multitude, even the disciples, even one-on-one, he would always pull from the prophets and the law and the Psalms. Jesus taught from the scriptures because he knew them. And if we're going to follow Jesus' examples, we need to know the scriptures so that we can understand God and know Jesus more. The third is prioritize prayer. We, we've kind of talked about that over the last number of years here around Highway. We, we say pray first, pray first. Prayer is our communication with God. Again, Jesus showed us how important it is for us to constantly talk with God. And that leads to the fourth one, which is seek solitude. If you look through the gospel accounts of Jesus' life, you'll see there's many times that Jesus wanted to get away from the crowds. There are times he even wanted to get away, sometimes just with the disciples, and, and a number of times just by himself to seek solitude, to retreat into God's presence, to go and pray and communicate and commune with God. We need to learn the same thing, to get away from the busyness of our lives, to slow it down a little bit, uh, to get into God's presence and not hurry away. And the last habit is choose church. See, Jesus himself would often be found at the temple or at the synagogues because he knew that he needed to go to the place where other worshipers gathered together. We need to continue to gather in a place where the good news of Jesus is proclaimed, where hope is provided, a place where we can be encouraged by other believers and at times where we too could encourage other believers. We need these places and we choose church. See, small habits done over a long time make a major difference. Say that again, small habits done over a long time make a major difference. So my challenge to you over these next 40 days is to learn the keystone habits of Jesus and start to put them into practice. If you do, they will help you grow in your relationship with God. They will help you become a better follower of Jesus. So I want you to start with a small step this week. I'm not saying jump into all five of these habits right away. No, we're going to need the next six weeks or so to unpack them and understand them. So that's not what I'm asking you. I'm asking you to start with a small step, a simple step. In fact, I'm even going to tell you, it doesn't even need to be a spiritual step today. But I'm asking you today, as you're watching and listening, that you would just pause for a split second that you would think, what are some things I could do? What is one small thing I could do to be my first step in building good habits? So a good step. Here, here's some ideas for you, baby. Maybe you want to say, I'm gonna floss my teeth every day this week. Or you're gonna make your bed every morning. Or you're going to get a good night's sleep, good quality sleep. Or, if you want a spiritual one, you're going to say, I'm going to read, starting this week, I'm going to read every day from the Being book so that I can be on track with the Being Challenge. If you've been watching and listening today and you say, you're talking about Jesus and following Jesus, but I don't know Jesus. You're watching today and you're saying, this is all great stuff, but I don't even know who Jesus is. Well... I want you to know that we want to introduce you to Jesus. We want to have the ability to help you find a relationship with God through Jesus. And so if you would pick up your phone and text the word love to the number on your screen, 416-267-1189. I will leave that number up for a moment. But please text us just the word love and hit send to that number. And then it's going to ask you, there'll be about three prompts asking for your name and contact info. We will be in touch with you because we believe the best decision you can make in your life is a decision to follow Jesus. And we want to help you with that, especially as we begin this being challenge. And you can come into a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you today 
that we are able to just come to you and say thank you for the example of Jesus. Thank you for his example in our lives. And Lord, we just ask that as we begin this being challenged, that you would be with us, that you would help us as we read our, our daily readings and devotionals in, in the being book, that, that it would speak to our hearts, that you would challenge us, and that we would agree to form good habits in our lives. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Just a couple of things before I let you go today. I want to make sure that you have a being book. Uh, if you didn't get one, uh, contact us even in the chat right now. Uh, put it in there or send us an email or go to our website and, and you can contact us, highwaygospel.ca. We want to make sure you have a book and we will work to make sure you get a book as soon as possible if you can't make it to the highway building. Um, like I had already mentioned, Tuesday is day one. When you get a book, you'll have a calendar in that book. Um, if you follow that calendar, Tuesday is day one, and then it'll go for 40 days from there. Uh, we're going to put a QR code up for you right now. This is how you can sign up for a small group. Just take your camera, point at the QR code. Don't take a picture of it. Just let the camera see it, and it'll open up a, a link for you. Tap the link, and that's our small group sign-up sheet, and you can go there and, uh, because being in a small group will help you get even more out of the being challenge. Well... So glad that you took time to be with us at Highway Online today. And I look forward to the being challenge that lays ahead of us. If you live locally, we invite you to come and join us at the Highway Building on Sunday mornings. We'd love to get to, to meet you in person if that's doable for you. Uh, either way, join us here online next week or in the building. And in the meantime, have a great week. Dig into the being challenge. And remember, Highway is a place to belong.